Welcome back to Fight a Fork. Today we are doing bang bang shrimp. Now, Australians will know, we don't call them shrimp, we call them prawns. So we're doing bang bang prawns, but bang bang shrimp is just kind of, you know, it's just, it's just, you know, you're not gonna say Bubba Gump prawn company, are you? It just doesn't sound right. So let's get into it. It is getting cold, finally, and I'm loving it. Big fire, actually wearing a hoodie. I've got a porter, loving this. As always, there's a code word somewhere in this video, so make sure you comment that code word down below to win a copy of my book. Cheers. Start off, we need some prawns. So I like to just buy the prawn meat because I'm lazy and it means I don't need to de-shell, it means I don't need to de-vein. De you can just buy the good bits, straight up. There's no disadvantage to it, really there isn't. And if there is, let me know. Um, I know when you're cooking prawns, like grilling prawns, they taste better if you cook them in the shell, but if you're doing what I'm doing, and you're gonna have to, when they're raw, make them into prawn meat, there's no disadvantage. Uh, then, to that, we're gonna add a bit of buttermilk. If you can't find buttermilk for some reason, basically every supermarket sells it, if you can't find it for some reason, look up on the internet a recipe for buttermilk because it's just, it's just um, lemon juice and milk. Funnily enough, buttermilk contains no butter. And then to that we'll add a little bit of salt and pepper. Bit of pepper. There you go, mate. You can't be doing this in King's Park. This is ridiculous. Shut up, mate. Can you, can you go adjust the green screen? What are you, what are you making? Making? Oh, yeah. prawns, mate. Prawns. Oh, mate. I mean, sorry, shrimp. Shrimp. Make sure you... Go and throw a shrimp on sure the barbie. Make sure you share it with everyone, okay, mate? Yeah, no, no. Don't be selfish. All right. I was waiting for a dad joke from you. <laughs> if you watched the last episode we did together, this is uh, Todd, by the way. Todd from Offer Crusader. If you watched the last episode, he was on fire with the dad jokes, and I was very impressed. So, yep. yeah, well done. All right. <clears throat> if you're a mum that makes dad jokes, don't be afraid. Yeah, you're absolutely. Just, you're just a faux pas. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I see what you did. That was that was actually not bad. No, that was actually bad. not bad. Wait, which way to the nearest caviar dealer? Uh, just next to the Wagyu uh, Wagyu stand, which is my fridge. Oh, cool. No worries. Yeah, All right. perfect. Cheers, mate. Enjoy Cheers. your um, bubblegum shrimp. <laughs> All right. So we're going to leave that for a little while. Uh, this is really easy, this one. This is a super quick and easy recipe, by the way. Uh, I think let's get on with the sauce and then we'll do some rice. I'm actually just gonna do the sauce in one of my cups, I think. Bit of dust in it, that's all right. Now, I don't know the exact proportions of this, so I'm gonna make it up as I go. Start with some sweet chili sauce. So I'm gonna go probably third. Two parts sweet chili, one part kewpie mayo, and then one part sriracha. The color looks right. That pinky sort of thing. Tastes bloody good. It's really bloody good actually. Not, it's not a spicy sauce. It obviously has spice, but it's not at all, I wouldn't call that hot. Um, just a little bit tangy. It's lovely. Oh, it's really good. Next, let's make some rice. I'm a bloody, that's my measuring cup. It's no good. <clears throat> I'm sure I have another one of them around. I do, it's a little bit dirty, but we can fix that. So these cups, you didn't know, are pretty much one cup. They're all handmade, so they're good enough for most things. Certainly good enough for rice, because as long as you've got the same container, it does not matter. And so all the web warriors don't get angry at me. Got an old t-shirt that I put underneath this spreadboard. So it doesn't slide around. And we don't need tons of rice. So we'll go one cup. And with that, oh, it's still wet. And then we're gonna rinse it. So basically just chuck water in. Give it a good stir around till it gets cloudy. Then drain the water off and do it again. Do it like three or four times, depending on your water capacity. If you have a small water capacity, just do it as is. I've got 250 litres or something here, so 
I'm not too concerned. We're here for one night. Mate, slow down. It's all what? Right. What? Just don't just slow down, all right? It's not a rice. I knew, I was like, ah, oh, how is he, like, how is he going to build up to this one? There's going to be something. There's always something. That was actually, that was, it wasn't one of your better ones, but it's not your worst. <laughs> it's quantity, not quality. Right. Yep. Okay. Then you add one and a half times the amount of water to the rice. So one cup to one and a half cups of water. And we'll put that in the heat. Now in preparation for the final bit, I'm just gonna heat up some oil. So I've just got cheap vegetable oil. You can use rice bran, peanut, whatever flavorless oil you like. So that was about 400 mils kind of thing. And put that in the heat. Because we're gonna shallow fry these guys. Uh, which means it needs to be slightly, well, about half the width of a prawn is how deep of oil you have. Next, some corn flour. Now, if you're a celiac, gluten-free, whatever person, make sure that you get a proper corn flour. There are plenty of wheat corn flours. They've actually changed the branding now so that it has to say wheat corn flour if it's got wheat in it. Um, but yeah, plenty of brands of corn flour actually are made from wheat because it's cheaper. Even better, go to an Asian store and buy potato starch. It gets crispier, it's nicer, it's all around better, but it breaks my rule. And I've got a little rule, which is if you can't buy it from the supermarket, you can't have it camping. Sorry, you can't be one of my recipes. Um, because I like people who live in, you know, rural Tasmania or Broome or anywhere um, to be able to make my recipes without having to go to little hipster stores and shop in bloody Narnia. All right, a couple more things to prep and then we should be all good. Spring onions or green onions are an absolute pain in the ass to travel with unless you have a gigantic fridge. So I recommend cutting them up into small pieces when you get them or when you're at home and putting them in Tupperware. I don't mean like slicing them like this. I mean, cut them into the length of your Tupperware into, you know, five or six pieces and and carry them like that because they are truly a pain in the ass. Uh, I just happen to have gigantic fridges and I'm only here for one night, so I can have a bunch of um, spring onion. Also, spring onion is a lovely garnish, but absolutely not necessary for this dish. It's not a good travel food, really isn't. It's great for a weekend, great to impress someone, but not at all something I'd recommend for any kind of a remote travel thing, whereas the rest of this dish is great for remote travel. Final ingredient. Cabbage. So I really recommend cabbage for remote travel because it doesn't bruise. It kind of gives you that lettucey fresh feel without actually it being lettuce. Because lettuce sucks for remote travel because it goes off fast, it bruises easily, takes up heaps of room. It's just generally crap for traveling. Cabbage is bloody bulletproof and lasts. Like you can get like a month out of a cabbage. So red or green cabbage is totally fine. I don't think I will dice that. I kind of like the look of it like that. All right, last step here before we get to cooking is we're going to make these prawns a little bit ready for crispy. So you can just drop them in the corn flour and chuck them in a bowl. You can add panko crumbs and egg and things like that, but I think it complicates it these end up crispy. I love doing this sort of stuff in the bush because it doesn't matter about all this mess <laughs> on the ground. Because I've, there's, yeah, I'm definitely dropping stuff on the ground. It just really doesn't matter. That can go down the sink, that can go on the fire. And this just, whatever. All right, let's do some prawns. Oil temperature is 180 degrees, by the way, so should bubble up nicely. This may or may not be my second batch of oil because I got carried away doing camera stuff and let it get up to like 400 degrees and then it was all smoking and carcinogenic and gross. So yeah. I believe I can fry. <laughs> <laughs> <God>. <laughs> I 
Have you just been thinking these up all day or does it come naturally? <laughs> what do you think I do all day? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so you're supposed to shallow fry these, but I honestly poured the oil in the dark the second time. So I put too much in and now they're just going to deep fry, which will create the same result. But yeah, you only have to put half this amount of oil in. It's our oil temp at now after we put all the cold stuff in. 130. So we'll fry them for about, I don't know, two minutes ish. Oh, beer, 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 beer. You're a good boyfriend. I know you'd be, um, you'd be devastated if I touched my dog and then touched your food, wouldn't you? No, that's all right. Yeah, I know you, you know, you'd never forgive me. That's all right. Probably gonna, call the internet police. You gotta eat my breakfast, so you know. Oh shit. <laughs> dog hair jaffles. <laughs> <laughs> this is Cooper, by the way. Yeah, he's 15. And you reckon that's pretty camping. good for a camping dog? Give a like and uh, make sure to subscribe to Fire the Fork. To not my channel. Yeah. And Actually, also buy Off Road Crusader merch because, you know, it really helps <laughs> Cooper out with buying gluco glucosamine tablets, you know? Um, actually, we're going to do a dog, dog camping video on his channel, so head over and check that out. Yep. Uh, link up in that corner. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I got it right. I'm like, I'll get back to I'll definitely not remember to do that. <laughs> God, they look so good, don't they? All craggly edges and... Mm. Oh. Do you like prawns? I do. I do. Really like. Good. I didn't actually ask you that. <laughs> I mean, crayfish is up there, but like prawns are fried. <laughs> I do it myself because I can't employ a drummer. So, you know. Be your own biggest fan. Hey, it's just I just like to say to my editor, please cut all this shit out. <laughs> <laughs> if Don't. you see this in the final video, make sure to leave a thumbs up. <laughs> We're looking good. Crispy prawns are pink, which is the crucial bit. So the actual prawn meat's cooked. Do these, rest them, and then I'm going to chuck the rest on, and I'll see you back over at the table. Alrighty, let's serve this stuff up. So, uh, rice, which I'll be honest, was done quite a while ago. Still hot, winner. Probably a little bit drier than I'd like, but that's okay. Rice is good, rice, rice lasts well. If you ever, you know, get Asian takeaway. Rice is good for a little bit of time. Steams and sits nicely, and as long as you don't keep cooking it or anything, it's Survives quite well. Now, I'm gonna throw a few, oh, these crispy boys. Oh, this batter is so crispy and nice. Now I'll throw a little bit of cabbage on the side. Pretend it's healthy. It's not, it's not healthy. It's actually, actually, you know, to be honest, it's not too bad. It's prawns with like a small amount of corn flour and corn flour is not too bad. Um, it's better than panko and stuff. So, you know what? This is not too bad. It is fried in oil, obviously, so there is a bit of fat, but overall, not too bloody bad. I've definitely made worse. Sprinkle some spring onions on top. Presentation has never been my strong point. Actually, I'll put some sauce on first. Bloody lovely. Spring onion on top, make it look healthier. And there, is some gratuitous B-roll ready prawns. All right, Todd, come on. Let's do some eating. We've done the fire bit. Oh, now it's time for the fork. My favorite time of the night. All right. That looks amazing. Sour guy. That's good. <laughs> that rice is really nice. It is, isn't it? It doesn't matter where you come from. If you're African, Asian, Australian, Eurasian, whatever it may be, you can eat this. We're not racist. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> mm. Code word tonight is dad jokes. Just so you know. <laughs> Usually I think of it when I'm editing, but I know it now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Alright, thank you so much for watching. 
Subscribe to our friend Chris Sider and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs> hey! I'm lucky I can eat this. I'm on a seafood diet. Yeah, seafood and Seafood and it. Mm. <laughs> oh, shit. Does it go with beer? Does it go with beer? Shit. Bloody oath it does. Oh, yes. Second opinion. Mm. Hope you like porters. Hang on to your mouth for that. The batter. The batter is where it's at. Yep, yep. Cuts through the Mate, the that's good, but that's batter. Jesus. <laughs> See you in the next one. <laughs> I don't know how you can't all this shit. <laughs> These onions, do they work in the autumn as well? <laughs> I truly don't know how you come up with it all. <laughs>